Hi, I'm Leslie Tucker Jennison. I'm a contemporary quilt maker, fabric designer, and workshop facilitator. I really love to work with my own personal imagery, and I thought it would be fun to show you a little bit about it and give you some ideas about how you might, too, be able to use your own photographs or drawings in your own work. So first I'm just going to show you what I did with one of my photographs. Um, this is using a digital printing service online and uh, they have a variety of fabrics that are available to quilt makers and garment makers alike, which is great. This happens to be a cotton broadcloth. It's really a lot of fun, and this particular uh, image is a photograph I took in my garden, and I took it into the program, and I shifted the colors. There's a lot of things that you can do with this particular program. I'm just going to focus on changing color in the image. So here's a couple of different ways that I shifted that same image. Whoops. And you can see that it really alters the way that the image looks. To some degree, it will flatten the image, which I think makes it look a little more like a pop art piece. So now let me show you how I do that on the computer. Now, like a lot of different online services, you may need to create an account to uh, use the software. The one thing I like about this is that I can upload an image or a drawing that I make, and then I have lots of different options as to how I can use the image. But one of the things that I always recommend for people to do is that if you have something in the image that you don't want, it's best to try to edit that before you actually start to use the software online. So I'm just just going to walk you through it and I'm showing you what my account looks like. You can see my name at the top right of the screen and then when I am getting ready to load an image you can see I put this drop down menu and you'll see the second thing it says is design library. So I'm going to load an image into the design. Now I'm going to show you two different versions of this drawing. This is a drawing I made of my hand but I don't necessarily want that writing that I put on the drawing to be part of the image. So what I'm going to do is edit that before I upload the image. So this will tell me how to select that file. It also asks you to confirm that you do own the copyright to that image, which I think is very important, or that you've obtained permission from the original photographer. Now here I accidentally loaded the wrong image of my drawn hand. It still has the writing on it, so I'm, it's asking me if I want to delete this. So you have the option of deleting and re-uploading a different image. So here's the proper image. And I have hit change color on the, I'm going to back up and show you that over on the left column you can see that one of the options is to change the color. So I'm going to select that and this is the next screen that I get and it shows you all the different um, shades of this drawing. I don't necessarily want to work with this many shades of the image so I am going to click the advanced color option and I'm going to reduce the amount of color choices that I have. So I can choose any of these 12 down to 2 First I think six, then I decide, eh, no, I'm gonna just use 12. So it's gonna give me this breakdown of my color image. Now the next thing that I can do is I can decide to change each of those shades. So when I select a color from my, my shade bar at the bottom of the uh, left column, it'll bring the color that I want to change and then I can click the, one of those color options to replace it with. So then once I've changed that color, you can see what my hand looks like in all the places that I decided to have the color transfer to red. And I can continue to work this way. Here I've selected the dark gray and I'm shifting it to the burgundy. And that's what the image looks like now. It shows you each time and you can always have the option to revert it, to cancel it and move forward. You have lots of options here. So I'm going to move forward with this and I'm going to continue to change my colors. As I get to the lighter colors that are left on my color bar, I want to see what's going to happen if I shift those light colors. So now I've got kind of a pink and a little bit of yellow on my image. Next, I tried the blue and I didn't like it, so I'm changing that back to the pink. But now I want to see what happens if I select one of those really light colors and I shift it to light, kind of a turquoise blue. I can see now where the scanner has read that shade and you can see now on my, on my screen 
that this light blue is kind of in the upper part of the image. And I don't think it really adds anything to it. So what I will do on the next screen is select the blue and opt to change that to white. And if you notice at the bottom of that color box, I have a grayscale from white on the left to black on the right. I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to take all those light grays and shift them over to white so that I end up getting this really white background. So now that I've decided that I like that, I'm gonna decide that I'm gonna save my edited design. And notice that over below my color bar where I've changed the colors, I've renamed this image Pink Hand Drawing. And I'm gonna hit Save. So now when I go to my own design studio, my original image of the hand and my um, new ch color changed hand are both up on my little design bar. And this now is showing me what this looks like as a fat quarter, but if I want to look at it as yardage, I will select, go down on the right column and where it says choose size amount, I selected one yard. And here's what my repeat, if I have a basic repeat, this is what it would look like. And here's what that same repeat would look like if I selected a two yard increment. So I get the, um, I, I decide I'm gonna look at all these different uh, repeats. Here's a half drop. This is what a one yard piece of this fabric as a half drop repeat would look like. And here it is as a mirror image. It looks a little like an alien creature, I think. And here's what that same mirror image looks like if I select just a fat quarter. So it's really important to look at the fabric that you've changed and look at the repeat that you're asking for when you choose to print the fabric. And now I can go through the same thing and change the colors to a different color story. And this is what I'm doing now. So after I've decided if I want to save this or not, I will rename this particular color shift and I'm gonna call this yellow, green, blue hand. Not very original, but it works. So now what that is going to do is that in my design bar, you see the original, the pink, and the yellow, green, blue hand. So that is what it's like when you're doing um, the software. And now I'm gonna show you a few more of the fat quarters that I've printed out using that same strategy. This particular set of prints, these are all fat quarters. The top one is the original, and this is a close-up detail of a fabric that I printed using thickened dye. So that's the original color story, and I, using the same strategy I just showed you earlier on the computer, here's what that same image looks like as I shift the colors. So I like this because it gives you this sort of posterized, kind of highly graphic set of images, and it's really fun to work with in a quilt. Here's another set. This is an agave plant that was for my garden. This is the original image, and here's how it looks when I you know, decrease the color options and then change the colors. Again, it looks, uh, the image gets really flattened. Here's one with just the neutrals, and you see it really looks flat. And here it is as green, and on and on. It's really a lot of fun. The thing that's great about these um, online services is you can often experiment with the image, and you're not really committing to making the purchase until you've decided you've got the right colors that you like. So now here is a quilt that I made with, this is actually one of my fabric lines, and I took a photograph of a quilt that I'd already made, and then I put it in that same software, and I altered the colors. So this is what that looks like as a variety of colors. And then, here's a couple of other quilts that I made using the same same process, shifting the colors. Believe it or not, this is actually a sliced in half Napa cabbage. So I thought it was kind of an interesting image and I kind of went further with these images in the quilt construction by cutting some of the portions of the central part of the quilt and rearranging them with one another. And it's kind of interesting as the focal point of this quilt and then I added some of the improvisational pieces to the negative space. Same with this one, here's the original image in the center and I changed the colors of all these surrounding images and added my own piecing into the negative space. So I hope that by seeing some of these 
you will be inspired to try it with your own drawings or photographs. And I hope you will find something that you really enjoy doing.